Hey, hey, hey. Check it out. I'm going to do as short as possible tutorial here on Serato DJ. I'm going to make this quick and painless, hopefully. And uh, let's get right into it. So a little quick overview of what you're looking at here. Uh, this view right here is called an extended view. A lot of you guys might see things in that vertical view. Not too many use horizontal, I don't think. And you got stack. And of course, library. I personally, I like extended view because I get to see the most amount of track. Um, of course, if you're running a slower computer, sometimes the frame rate doesn't look good because it's drawn so much stuff on screen at a time. So that's when maybe you might want to use one of the other views because that's going to make things run a little smoother for you. So this here is the stripe information. Stripe information, basically the whole waveform in one shot from the beginning to the end. These little markers. They're cue points. There are points where I can hit pads. I can jump to that spot in the track. I can quantize. That's the quantize up there. See, quantize is on, quantize is off. When quantize is on, that means when I jump to a spot in the track, it does it on perfect beat. Like on the one, two, three, four, then you hit the one and it jumps. One, two, three, four. And I just jump back again. I just had things filtered out so you can hear me a little bit. I'm not going to be mixing a whole lot of tracks here, mainly because, guess what? If you use other people's music, then uh, that's a bit of an issue. So I'm just using a loop. I'm not playing the guy's whole track, right? Um, let's turn this down a little bit more here. So that's the information right there. The red, of course, is your kind of your kicks. You see right in here, obviously that means there's no bass, there's no kicks happening. And it gives you an idea how it sounds. And then of course we got some kicks in there and that's what they look like. So that's your BPM. Uh, this is the percentage of change. So right now, I'm not right at zero. So 123 is the BPM of the song. You see that's the percentage you're changing and you can change that. This is the time it's playing. This is the time remaining. Of course it keeps chumping because I'm in a loop, obviously. Uh, these are those cue points I was telling you about right there. There's eight of them. One, two, three, four. Another four on that side. Uh, sync. And then of course, those there, that's the indicator of your loops. We'll jump back again here. Uh, this right here, this is going to be your slicer. How big you want your slicer to be. We'll get into that later. But you know what? These things are not that important to know if you're using it. Obviously, you need to be using the controller to be using this kind of stuff. But just to kind of give you a brief outline of it looks worse on screen. When you're using the controller, it's dead simple. You know, you press a button that says hot cue. You have eight buttons. You know, you hit a button to put a hot cue in. You hold down shift and that same button to delete a hot cue. Very simple. You know, when you go into the roll section, you can adjust your rolls. And everything can be done on the controller. That's the beautiful part about this software here. So if you want to load up another track, just move along. On the controller, I'm just going to hit the load button. And then another track is loaded in. I'm putting on a little... See, I'm moving around on the controller because the buttons are there. But you see it moving on the screen up there. That's how many loops I have going. I'm going to hold the sync button. Put the sync button on the other side. And then if you see it in here, these are what they call the serato icicles. They're lined up perfectly, which means everything's lined up perfectly. And I just turn the filter on a little bit. 
are coming out of the filter, that is. So there, now we got two tracks mixed in, two in a loop with the two of them. So let's say I want to put some effects in there, make it interesting. Hold up the effects window, see that repeater? Make sure over here, if you get the three, because we want to have three effects, not just one effect with the three effects, but on the repeater. I'll turn my effects on, see the number one come on. And you can use the repeater and you can kind of affect what the kick and the snares and everything just by see me I'm adjusting with the knob here. Let's adjust the time and see how that changes it. And you know what? You gotta kinda of play with it, but like anything, it takes practice, you know what I mean? Total practice for that kind of stuff. And then there, there's the echo out, of course. I'm going to do like a half beat echo out. Turn on all the way. Our effect's already turned on right there. Take it out. Now, if you have to do a four bar, check this out. One, two, three, four. That's a nice one, too. The four bar, like that four beat out, is nice. And bring it back. Hopefully we're not like over modulating this entire video here because I'm like redlining pretty hard. Okay, so that's just a quick one, the effects. You know what I mean? There's, there's delays, there's the echo out that you saw. Um, you can change the how many beats the effect has. And it's stuff that, you know, honestly, just play around with it. You know what? That's the fun of DJing is just try them out, experiment. You know what? You don't need me to teach you how to do effects. You know, you just need to know where they are and you can dive in. This is basically just to give you a quick overview. And so you have a fact. This isn't like A and B effects. This is one and two. So you can have a fact. Both of these effects can be on one channel, for instance, or you can do like the same on this to this. I do combinations and side chain them, all kinds of great, crazy things here. Um, on the side, you see these are crates. That's a crate. And then inside is a sub crate. You have smart crates. Smart crates, you can say, you know, I want to make a crate that has a BPM that's got more than 128 in it, for instance and say save so there's my smart crate and every time i bring music into my play into serato if it's higher than 128 like 128 and up it's going to automatically get added in there and there it is there's all my music right there that's over 128 or 128 and up and so I can go in there as well, too. So say, you know what? I want to fine tune that a little bit. You just click on the edit. And I'm going to add another rule. I can say uh, I want, let's say the genre contains, let's say techno.
Well, clearly, that didn't help at all. <laughs> Let's change that. Let's change the rule to 120 and see what happens. There, so this is everything that contains techno in it, in the genre. And uh, basically, if you hit the control key while you're clicking up here, this is just like a spreadsheet program. You can select what columns you want to see and what you don't want to see. So whatever works for you, you know what I mean? There's no right or wrong way for that. Just turn off the ones you don't use. And as you see, all the genres have the word techno in them. Go into the setup here. And uh, this is gonna be real quick. There's not that much, you know, this is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you'd like to have your file format set to wave. You don't want to record in an AIFF. This is far better. You know what? I usually have my USB latency to five milliseconds. This is 1.9.2, by the way. The latest just came out like an hour or so ago. And of course, you can go into your expansion packs here and you can add new things. But you know what? I'm going to talk about that much, much later because I don't really agree with it, but that's all right. So really, there's not that much to this program. It's a pretty simple, you know, we're going to stop the track over here. Go ahead and load up a track. I like to always place my first hot cue at the beginning of my track. Sync button is on because you know what? If you got it, use it. Why not? And things just happen on the one. I just started on the one, but I haven't mixed it in yet. And I'll just sneak it in slowly. I'm just doing loops right now because, of course, I'm not using uh, music that I'm allowed to use without not being able to monetize it, right? And I want to monetize it, so, you know. If you hold shift when you're on the beats, you'll see on the controller, you've got like a half, half your beat, double your beat. Underneath it says loop shift. You hold shift. And then you can shift your loop around. And then I just want to jump back, hit my hot cue. Do a little filter. And you know what? We're going to do a little echo out here. Set it for four. I'm going to turn on both effects channels and we're just going to hit the button on the echo out on the one. And we're doing the echo out. That's stopping that. You know, like, it's hard to do a full tutorial video on this thing because you know what? It's pretty simple. The only things that you're really paying much attention to are these waveforms, these icicles, 
And uh, if you're playing, depending on the kind of music, if you're playing hip hop and stuff with a lot of swing, live instrumental where it's not a steady beat grid, then um, you know what? The sync button doesn't help and you basically have to use your ears, but not only your ears, but you can use your visuals of keeping these lines together and making sure that things happen like that's the one. One, two, three. You know what I mean? Like, sorry, let me turn this off. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Was that just not even on? Maybe. Let's check this out here. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's your three, four. One, two, three, four. So, anyways. You know, like, I'm probably extending this thing a little bit so you get your money's worth out of the video, but like I said, there's not that much. Um, it's pretty basic software. And, uh, yeah, it's more about the controller. And unfortunately, the way I'm setting up this video right now, we're not even looking at the controller. We're just looking at the simplicity of Serato DJ and how easy it works. And this is the new 1.9.2. And I just thought, you know what? Let's do a little quick tutorial video just for guys that are, you know, just picking up the software, don't know. Just a kind of a quick overview here. So I think that's going to be pretty much it for now. If you have any questions or you want to comment, feel free down below. Say something. Say hello. And um, yeah. Is this a shitty tutorial? Kind of. Is it what you wanted? I don't know. You can let me know. You got something to say? Good or bad? This is the place. Talk to you soon.